Thank you. Thank you everybody for uh, coming online tonight. I know that some of you will have booked in tours um, and been to see the school and others will be coming on to listen to the information here. Um, and I welcome you all. Thanks, Chris. I would like to begin by acknowledging the Boonarong people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional custodians of the land where Werribee Secondary College is located and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Okay, we've got a bit of an agenda tonight, so you know what we're going to talk about. It'll be meet the team. I've got a few staff online tonight. We'll go through our values and our vision. Information about the college in general. Placements of how you actually um, come to Werribee Secondary College. What the transition will be like coming towards the end of the year or starting from August. The curriculum that you will come and learn when you start in year seven our CELT program, extracurricular things, the fun things you get to do outside of the classroom, our wellbeing team so we can support you, the basics of uniforms, books, and the device that we would like you to have, and then question time. What I'd like you to do is that if you have questions, pop them in the chat and we will get to them at the end because it's a pretty thorough a lot of information that we may very well answer your questions as we go through. But the question time, I will go back to the chat at the end. Thanks, Chris. So first of all, our team, there's myself, I'm the college principal, Amanda Mullins. I've got Mr. Deprano, who's the assistant principal that oversees year seven and eight. He couldn't be with us tonight because we have um, outside of school, we have our own families and sometimes these type of things clash with our own families. We've got the head of junior school, which is Mr. Duffin, who is um, well, he's on my screen at the top. Can you wave to us, Mr. Duffin? We might be able to see you. And we've got our director of wellbeing and inclusion, who's Miss Renee Dowling. She's not on my screen, but she may be on your screen. When she chats, we'll be able to see her. Thanks, Chris. The other thing I forgot to say is that um, this meeting is being recorded. So if anybody does miss it from your primary schools to say we forgot, couldn't come, whatever it may be, this will be put on our website so that people can have a look. Or if you wanna go back and check anything, you can do that. Our values at Werribee Secondary College are quite simple. It's respect and responsibility. So we have done a lot of work on this and these are our new values for this year. And I think all the young people that are on screen now would very much know these words because they're probably also spoken about at primary school. And all of our respect and responsibility is around three things, our learning and the learning of others, our personal identity, which students were very strong on wanting that about respecting each other's identity and being responsible for our own identity and the identity of others as well as our community on both a local scale and a global scale, that we actually learn about uh, what the communities of um, those that are close to us. And because we are such a diverse community, we have lots of links with the global population as well. Thanks, Chris. There are some quick facts. We've got about 1,550 students this year, and I should have updated that, we're up to 1,600. So we have grown quite a bit. Um, there are some new schools coming into the area that which will take some of those students, but um, a simple thing is we are busting at the seams, which is why we are also heavily zoned, which I know a lot of you will know about. We are a council of international schools, which is CIS. So that's a the bubble up the top. This means that we are accredited on a global scale that we go through quite a thorough um, review every four years and we um, are ticked off and being accredited for actually having a curriculum and a college that meets global standards. We also offer the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program, which is when you get to year 11 and 12 as another program that is alongside our VCE. It is quite different and something that you will learn about um, as an option if you come to the school. 
After school, we've got an army cadets, which a lot of our students join in. Um, and that is with uh, alongside the, um, the real army and they come in and it's a lot of teamwork and responsibility that is taught through that. We have got a select entry program where we run one class at each year level uh, that you can join in um, after you have done testing, once you have come to the college and you have actually enrolled, we then do testing. If you're a student that wants to go into um, a high achievers program, then that could be a possibility for you. We also have a really strong international student program. Prior to uh, COVID, we had 85 students from um, overseas that uh, choose to come to our college. At the moment, after COVID, we're back up to 56. So students from um, international destinations do choose our college and the diversity is one of those reasons. Uh, a lot of students have families that do live in the area and choose to go to our school. We are very much about focusing on the whole student. It's not just about academics and doing your work, but we have programs in place. We have structures in place and teams of staff that look after students' wellbeing. There is lots of leadership options and committees that students are on. Every sport that you can think of, we pretty much have going out and uh, competing at a local level. And if they do well, they compete further and further and sometimes they get to state level. Um, we have career and pathways that starts in year seven, but really ramp starts to ramp up in year nine and 10 before we get to make, to make our choices into year 11 and 12. And we are all about lifelong learning. So we continue to learn all the time and our staff also continue to learn all the time. We are extremely multicultural and inclusive of all our students. So in that little yellow box down in 2022, 16 of our year 12 students achieved ATARs of 95 with our top score of a 99.2. Some people like to know these numbers. 35 of our students, which is 16, nearly 17%, got ATARs over 90 and over 96% got their first round tertiary offers. So we're pretty proud of those numbers that it's more about the careers and pathways of our students that where they choose to go, um, the vast majority of them get their choices. Thanks, Chris. If you have been to the school, you will see that we've got modern classrooms and equipment. We've got brick buildings that are permanent, but we've also got a number of portables. All the portables um, are in a very nice state. They've all been renovated with new carpet, new um, furniture. All our rooms have the digital whiteboards. So um, there's doesn't matter what room you're in, whether it's a nice solid brick building or a, um, or a portable, that they are all very well equipped. The library and study centre is, um, is a space where students um, can go before school, recess, lunchtime, after school, and they also go through there in their classes. Our recital centre, you will see a photo there of students sitting in what looks like a theatre. Um, we often, if we meet as, um, as staff, if we meet with parents, students also, we have a strong music program where we have our music productions in there. Uh, so that's pretty well used and quite snazzy, really. We also have a theatre that is currently also being renovated um, for our, so when we do our plays, when we do our musicals, we can do them on site and we also practice and the theatre is set up. So, you know, it's got, um, it's got the big flash lights and it's not just a room, it actually feels like um, students are on a stage. We've got specialist classrooms in secondary school such as, well, we've got the gym, we've got um, science rooms and a number of science rooms, large technology centre, large music centre, um, and uh, art spaces that are specifically set up for those subjects. Lots of creative, spots, um, creative arts places. We've got a canteen, which the kids love. Today I had a comment of what's the hot meal today, and that's called, it's got a very fancy name called the Atrium Cafe. We also have a specialised careers and pathways de department, which is well sourced with, um, with staff that are trained in careers and pathways um, to be able to help students move on to their choice. 
So not all students go on to tertiary. We have a large, or we have a number of students that gain apprenticeships even prior to finishing school, um, and or those that go into the workplace. Um, you'll see our gardens around where we've got students that work on the gardens if they so wish, um, which is a nice thing for them to do that they get to actually be part of the community and make our community a nice space. Gender inclusive facilities and disabled access as well as prayer rooms um, are also provided. We've got really nice new lockers so there's no rusty old lockers, everybody gets their own nice space. And we've got online ordering for books and uniforms and there's now online ordering of your lunch if you want to. Thanks Chris. Now this is something that we get lots of questions about. There is a year seven placement process and you need to go to find my schools. This will be updated shortly because we have got new schools coming into the area. The zones have changed for next year. So it is not up to date yet, but it will be very soon. So you will get a placement pack in term two from your primary school if you are at a government primary school. Okay, so if you're not and you're at a Catholic primary school, then they too, some will give them out, others you might have to get from the college. In July, your placement will be confirmed when, and then you complete an enrolment. This is very late July. It actually could go into August this year. And we are not allowed to speak with any, um, any parents until the primary school tell you which school you are going to. So they handle all the paperwork right up until July, August. Then you will get, once we're allowed to do that, you will get an email from us and you will get all of the information sent out electronically. So in December then, grade six students attend a year seven transition day, which is the same transition day for all, um, for all government schools. So all grade sixes will go off to whatever year seven placement they are going to. We are zoned. So this means if you do not live in our zone, then you won't be able to come to Werribee Secondary College. So we really encourage you to make sure that you are applying to your zone school the local secondary schools all work very close to each other um, and we all have pretty much the same, the same um, information going out. Thanks, Chris. So our transition is at the moment you're in grade six and you're the oldest. That changes again next year when you become the youngest in the school. Now we also know that when you come to a really large school that has 1600 students and lots and lots of rooms that it can be quite scary. And what we do is that we try and make sure that you feel really good when you come to the secondary school and that you feel like you've got people there that are going to help you. And we start that on the orientation day where you will meet the students that are in your class for next year in your home group you will meet you as many teachers as possible that have got you in the following year and you will be able to run around and do some fun activities to find your way around. So we've got a really strong home, pro home group program that we have introduced this year. So, and that will certainly help you to be settling in. You'll meet the wellbeing team. So you will have um, a wellbeing social worker that will be working in the junior school for two years with you and be your point of contact should you need that. Very early on, we do an excursion to Adventure Park. This year, it was the 36 degree day. So everybody, um, nobody come back sunburnt, which was really good. Um, but that's a really great time where 250 students all get in their buses and go and have a bit of fun for the day. We also do a staggered start to the year, meaning our year sevens and year 12 start on the same day only two year levels. So that means that there's less students around and we can spend more time making sure that the year sevens are comfortable with where they're going. Um, we also try and minimize the movement for year seven students. So they may have um, a number of classes, their maths and their English in the same room across the, across the week. So it would be 10 times in the week in the same room to stop that having to find yourself um, getting lost. But what I do say is that it is a big school and there will be times where you get a bit lost early on, but I guarantee you we are into week 
seven and it's been a good four weeks where students don't know where they're going. So you will get used to it and it'll be okay. We have lots of lunchtime clubs and activities, art type clubs, reading clubs, debating. Um, we have lots of sport going on. And kids, when you come to secondary school, you still get to play. There's lots of damn ball that is played at lunchtime. You still get to run around. So we encourage that movement as well. We've also got an online year seven transition hub, which has all of the information. So when you are accepted into Werribee Secondary College, you will, as parents, you will be given a link to this hub and everything is done through that and you upload documents, you get all of your information online. We have worked really hard on making sure that the majority of questions that you can find out online which, without having to wait for people to ring you back, that type of thing. So it's really a thorough lot of information there. Thanks, Chris. Okay, I think this is you, Chris. Yep, I'll take there? over from there. Thank you, yep. Amanda. And um, good to, to see you all here tonight. Um, look, to give you an update on on a few different things, it's, it's important to understand that from a junior school perspective that we are not expecting students to completely understand the Werribee way when they first come to the college. It's about gradually introducing our expectations to them and supporting them through those initial weeks. Um, we obviously understand that um, you know, we, our goal is to teach students the curriculum, but at the same time, there's a range of different elements to that, including their well-being and their own overall health um, that we take into consideration. With regards to the curriculum, we obviously are teaching the Victorian curric curriculum in junior school and in middle school, where we've obviously got, um, we can um, expand on further into the what we call our Ivy Link program as students move on in middle school. So we have our core elements with being obviously English, math, science, humanities subjects, uh, health and physical education, technology, arts, and a language. So at the college, students will pick a language. So they'll do preference, they'll put through preferences um, and we'll allocate them a language. That language will stay with them through year seven and year eight. So it'll either be Chinese, Italian, Japanese, or Spanish. Now, uh, as it mentions there, we go through the Victorian curriculum and once they reach year 10, they will make choices with regards to whether they want to go into a, a VCE or a VCE vocational major, um, whether they want to um, choose to do a VET or through the IB pathway. It was mentioned before, but we do obviously run the Select Entry Learning Program, which is which is a program for of high expectations and high achievements. So it's a challenging academic curriculum uh, where there's full participation in um, the Victorian curriculum. So whether it be um, regular subjects, core subjects, but we're also looking at art, sports and technology. Um, and there's an expectation that there's participation in a range of co-curricular activities. We have an advanced instrumental program um, and a group of supportive and highly motivated peers um, that students work with to help um, support them and challenge them. Um, and also a history of outstanding um, IB, DP and VCE results. With regards to applications to 2024 um, in the Select Entry Learning Program, that can obviously happen once um, you've been accepted into the college, then you can go through and do the actual application. So more information has been provided at the college website um, and students do undertake uh, a testing um, through their primary school for that. So um, more information will be available once we've got that school placement in July. With regards to extracurricular activities, there are a range of different programs that we run at the college, um, inside of school and outside of school, um, that help keep our students engaged and help support the community. Um, so we do have a fantastic instrumental music program, um, which obviously works in our recital centre, um, that obviously works alongside our performing arts with regards to the theatre, so you can see on the bottom right hand side there. Uh, we do have the Werribee Secondary College Army Cadet Unit, um, and they do fantastic work as well, and it teaches students um, a range of different leadership skills and, and discipline as well. Students have the opportunity to become involved in student leadership um, all the way from year seven up to year 12. So starting off with um, regular um, student leaders within each year level up towards where we have a range of other opportunities, whether it might be a sports captain and debating captain um, and other 
um, school captains. At our college to help support um, students' well-being, we do have um, cafe and breakfast club. So on selected mornings throughout the week, we do have breakfast club where we understand some students find it difficult to have breakfast. So we do uh, provide that for them. But the best thing about it is that we do have volunteer students that come in and help work through that to help support other students. We've got debating and public speaking opportunities for students as well throughout the year. Um, and they meet at lunchtime and work through that. We've got the Duke of Edinburgh Award. We've got Mass Homework Club as well for students that may need extra support with their mass, as well as a wide variety of student lunchtime clubs. Um, ones that we have running at the moment are more of a get to know you, a more social club that's running at the moment, ran by Gabriel Ho, who's one of our wellbeing um, team members in the junior school. And that's about getting students that may not feel comfortable talking to others, getting them together and help supporting each other and feeling engaged. With regards to student wellbeing and inclusion, I'm not sure if Renee Dowling, you're there, if you wanted to talk to this at all, or I'm happy to talk to that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Renee Dowling. I'm the Director of Student Wellbeing and Inclusion at Werribee Secondary College. Um, it's lovely to meet you all. and I'm looking forward to, to meeting. I can see a few little friendly faces already, which is great. Um, wellbeing is everyone's responsibility. So all your teachers and all, everyone at the school will take care of your wellbeing, but we have that extra special support from a beautiful wellbeing team. Um, we've got Mr. Ho, Mr. Keo, and we've got someone else coming along as well. So these are people with um, formal qualifications in the area of wellbeing. It might be social work or counselling. So that's something that the school really values um, is having qualified staff uh, holding these positions. So your kids will be in the best care. Uh, we always say that happy kids and kids who feel safe are going to learn much better. So what we want to do is um, provide that holistic approach. So we've got a range of supports in place um, to help with transition. But if you're finding you need a bit of above and beyond that, we do have the resources for that. We offer counselling, some group work um, and also financial hardship, because I know sometimes it can be tricky with with um, books and things and uniforms. So we all all um, we can offer that as well. Um, we might skip to the next slide just briefly. Okay, the next one I'll quickly talk to you about is the disability and inclusion. So um, if your child has a formal diagnosis or has any sort of um, learning difficulties, it's really important once you have been accepted into the school that you pass on that information nice and early so that we can do um, appropriate transition work and let all the teachers know what, what the needs of your child um, are. Um, we do apply a strengths-based approach to their learning and we also are very much in line with the Department of Education um, uh, system where we support by doing targeted interventions. So you may be very much used to having an aid in a classroom and things like that, but um, the new system is very much around uh, looking at the strengths of that child and then the areas that might need a bit of extra help. That's how we use um, funding in that area with the disability inclusion. So we have a strong focus on literacy and numeracy. Um, and that's, that's probably enough for me. If there's anyone else with particular questions, please hold off and then um, just email me directly after uh, July because we want to keep obviously things nice and private on here. But if you have, if you need my contacts, by all means, um, you can contact the school and ask me any direct questions. Thank you. All right. So. Um, it was mentioned before that our college website, of which is at the bottom, it's got a range of information um, that can help detail a lot of the, the little day-to-day -day things that happen at the college. Um, and this is just a select range of that that we've got up here. So on our left, you can see our, our uniform. We have moved away from having summer and winter uniforms to all your uniforms. Um, our goal is to make it more inclusive for everyone um, or gender inclusive. We have maroon blazers, which have been um, an important part of our identity as a college, and it's something that we're proud of and we continue to wear. Now, we do, we used to have a uniform shop on site that's now moved through to Academy Uniforms. Again, that information's on the website, and we do have opportunities for secondhand uniforms as well as secondhand books. So, um, those opportunities will be there for you. We, we are a BYOD um, school, which means that um, 
we do ask students to bring in a device um, and we can get it connected to our network for them to use. Uh, there is some specifications, minor specifications that um, is available on the school website. Um, an easy way to consider that is um, a sort of generic laptop or iPad should be um, acceptable enough to get connected to our, um, our network. We do find as students move through to more of the senior year levels that they probably tend to prefer using a laptop where they're doing a lot more typing, um, but a general iPad is um, acceptable. So um, you are available to have that. Um, there will be book lists that will be available online and we do ordering through JP Books. Again, we are mindful of the fact that the start of the year can quite be, can be a hectic time. So, um, and sometimes there are delays with books. So the first few weeks, we really do encourage teachers to be patient and understanding with students as they're getting their books coming in. I know more recently, the last couple of weeks, we've been having extra rounds of books coming through. So we are flexible with that um, to try and support students through this, this process. As well, we also have, um, and it's important that we use Compass as our almost our portal for communication and reporting. So some schools I know do use Compass, some may not. Um, this is the mode that we do use. So that will have um, where, sorry, students and parents will have a login um, and they'll be able to see the, their child's timetable. Um, you'll be able to email teachers, you'll be able to see progress reports, and more importantly, be able to update attendance and be aware. We are uh, obviously following the, the department's guidelines with regards to attendance, and we know that students, when they're at school, are more likely to be engaged and more likely to be successful. So um, Compass is a great way for us to communicate with you if a child's away, but also a great way for you to communicate to us if there is going to be any absences. Uh, we also have newsletters which are available, um, and that gives an up-to-date uh, analysis of what's going on at the school. We try and promote um, positive news stories within that newsletter, and we've had one that's just recently go out, um, and we do provide information as well on our college Facebook page, and we do have it an, an Instagram page at the moment that um, we do quite often get students to, um, our student leads to be engaged with that. Uh, there are also opportunities to get involved with school council, um, as well as the Parents and Friends Committee, which does meet and have morning teas um, as well throughout the year. That pretty much is all the information that um, we're going to provide with you for the moment. Now, we do have a range of different questions that have come through on the chat. Um, mm -hmm. And what I'm going to try and do is I might pause my screen for a second so I can get up and get onto that. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to add, Amanda, before we do go through the questions at all? Um, no, I don't think so. Oh, if I give any, if you need a minute to um, to put any questions in the chat, I'm happy to do that. Um, but the zones is the very first question. The zones are going to be, it has to be announced by the minister. Um, and that is supposedly going to happen on the 24th of March. Um, sometimes those, um, those timelines aren't adhered to. So, but if you start looking at Find My Schools, which you Google that, um, on the 24th of March, then you will see the updates. Um, for us, the introduction of Lollipop Creek Secondary College will take in some of our zone, not a large amount, but some of our zones. So I think if you live down near Harpley, it may be that you are impacted by that. Um, students, do they change room for each class or subject? They will change rooms because if they've got science, they need to be in a science room, in a science lab. If they've got technology, they're in a technology room. Um, music and art are all specialist rooms as well as PE. But when we come down to things like um, our home group area will be the same every day. So you have the same start to every day in the same room. And as much as possible, we try and have our English and our maths in the same room, but students will have to change. Um, so our, our zoned area is contracting. So because we are very, we've got a lot of students. Um, the self test will ha be happening in September. So the date hasn't been um, organised as yet, hasn't been set in, but CELP cannot happen. So we have to go through all of our enrolments and then you will get the opportunity to sit the EDGER test. So that won't be until September after 
all of the, um, the transition forms are in and that you have been accepted into the college. Um, you will apply for admission. That will start, um, that, that all starts pretty soon where you get the information, where you get the paperwork from the primary school um, and it will be done through the primary school. So you won't, um, it, they do it every year and we are in contact with, with them. It's, they follow the department guidelines and, um, and their dates just like we do. Um, as far as leadership training programs go, we've had, we have students that go off and take the opportunities to join in. There was one that was a United Nations one last week that um, our four captains went off to. So there are opportunities to come together and have leadership training. We also do that in our network. So we have a large group of students that join with other leaders um, in the network of other schools, other secondary schools, and join in the day all together and um, work through how to be a good leader. Um, SELP versus IB versus Australian curriculum. So the SELP class follows the Australian curriculum um, or the VIC curriculum actually from seven to 10. So as, and IB doesn't start until year 11 and 12. So all students follow the Victorian curriculum um, from seven to 10. And it's not until we get into later years that then it branches off into different choices. Um, so the SELP test, as I've said, will be coming in in If a sibling has already been in school um, and the child is out of zone. Okay, to, to apply the sibling rule, you have to have a child at the school. So if they have finished year 12 and are no longer at the school, then the sibling rule does not apply. If you have a child at the school um, currently and you find yourself out of zone or you've moved house, then we can apply the sibling rule, but the sibling has to be attending the school. Um, at tours are online where you can book a tour. I encourage you to do that. And they are Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. So if you would like to come for a tour, you are more than welcome. We like to do them during the daytime. And I also encourage you, it's really important that the young people come along because this is the people that it's all about and they have to get a feel for the school and actually um, make, you know, it helps with them make the decisions as well. Um, so Corpus Christi, you need to, um, so if you're at a Catholic school, you need to be telling them that you um, are probably not going on to a Catholic school and they will give you the paperwork that you need. So I suggest that you, um, you let your school teachers know that if you need the paperwork for government schools. Um, the VCE subjects that the school offer is pretty much the full range. So um, off the top of my head, I'm going to miss some. So I suggest that if you pop onto our website and have a look at the handbooks, the VCE handbooks, you will be able to see, um, to see what we do offer. Um, we offer the majority of subjects, whether they all run or not is dependent on students' choice. So for example, philosophy didn't run this year because only two students chose it. Um, and we can't, we can't um, offer classes where with low numbers like two students. So it is dependent on what the student choice is. Um, also, it's the same as VET subjects. And they, what I say we're offering now, five years down the track, it might be different. Um, so, but VET subjects we offer in school at our college, but also students actually travel and go to other colleges um, or to a TAFE to be able to do some of the VET courses as well. Um, you will have an opportunity, students have an opportunity to apply for leadership when they start at school. And this is all information that you get through, um, students will get through Compass, that you can come and join different groups um, and be part of SRC, to be part of student committees, that talk about the curriculum and what they learn, um, our positive climate. We talk about how we have um, a positive climate at school and students have a lot of input into that as well. Um, so the, there is no difference for IB and VCE for uni acceptance. So the IB um, is marked quite differently, 
but it is their final mark is converted into an ATAR, which currently helps students or is the a numerical way to get into university. But I, that is a changing space and more and more universities are not relying on an ATAR. There is portfolios that students might put together. There's a lot of pathways, unlike say when mums and dads were at school to be able to, you had to have a num the, that final number at VCE to go to university. There's a lot of pathways to go into, um, into further education beyond school. So, and that is quite a changing place where they're moving away from reliance on just exams at the end of year 12. Um, is Alamanda students get admission into Werribee Secondary College? So Alamanda is a Peter 9 school and they are also an IB school. They do international baccalaureate in the middle years. We are able to take um, some students from Alamanda that are wanting to continue on into the IB diploma in year 11 and 12. So that is the only way that Alamanda students come into the college is through doing um, the IB in year 11 and 12. Um, as far as how big is the zone, it's it's pretty big. I can't actually put a kilometre radius on it or anything like that. It's something that you will have to look at on my schools to see if um, if you are in the zone to come to Werribee Secondary College. Girls can absolutely join cadet, the cadet program. It is inclusive and it is much for boys and girls. It does not matter what the gender is. Um, it says, is participation in extracurricular activities encouraged? Absolutely it is. And the extracurricular activities that you can join up from being in theatre groups, from being in doing extra music um, performances to taking up an instrument to being in sporting teams, a debating team, um, to be part of breakfast club, making breakfast in the morning. Um, there's lots of opportunities that are really diverse that we encourage all students to be part of. And I encourage students to take every opportunity you can um, because that's what makes your secondary school life fun and memorable to be doing all of those different things, not just going to class. So we certainly do encourage that. Um, students don't have to be involved in inter-school sports up until year 12. They have the opportunity if they want to. Um, so certainly we don't say that year 12 students can't be part of sports. Um, so we certainly encourage them and we have sporting teams at every year level. Um, so the VCE process is still strictly VCE pay. I'm not quite sure, Amy, what you're asking there. So um, if you can pop in, VCE process is still strictly is still strictly VCE based. Um, maybe you're thinking about we have the VCAL program, which is more of an applied program where students all have to do a vet and they go out into the workplace, has changed across the state this year. So we still do applied learning, but it does look a little bit different. Um, but we still, and that is now a VCE certificate as well. Um, oh, Amy, sorry, I see this when I mean, I meant VCE marks based. Yes, it is VCE marks based. So we do, so um, the VCE marks still apply. That hasn't changed. What is different is the, um, the, the pathways onto um, tertiary education or TAFE is becoming a lot different as we go through the years. And I think probably in five years time that it will be different again. So we have a lot of students that have already been placed in their tertiary um, placement through different ways of applications. And that is before they even do their VCE exams, they've gotten a place to go into a TAFE or a university. So lots of ways to get into um, that beyond secondary school space that you want to go into. Casual dress days, we have um, probably one a term um, and that is for a reason because, and I'll be honest, often casual dress days comes with casual everything day of casual about how much work we do and casual about our behaviours and the way we do things. So it's amazing how a uniform can actually impact um, our casualness at school or how we expect to expect to be. So we don't have a lot of them for that very reason. 
Um, it's also a safety thing. You know, we can actually identify all of our students by the uniform that they're wearing. So it's really important that we, you know, that we protect our students and we make sure that they're safe as possible. Um, so IB students don't need to study IB in primary school. They can go into it in year 11 and 12. And an all year uniform is, so we used to have a, a summer uniform and then we had a winter uniform. We know that sometimes the girls want to wear pants all year round and not have to wear a skirt or a dress, and that's fine. So we've changed those rules so that you have a choice of what you wear and when. We also know that our boys, sometimes our boys and our girls like to wear shorts all year round. So you might feel more comfortable in shorts, especially younger students when you're running around and you, you get hot and you want to be in your shorts. So that's fine too. So as long as you are wearing the proper uniform in the proper way, we're not really fussed about when you do that. So it also means that you've got, um, you know, when we have cooler days in summer that you don't have to wear the particular uniform that when you want to be a bit warmer. So and sometimes we had days that when we had to go into our winter uniform that were warm when April came. So it just gives us a choice that, you know, what you feel comfortable in all year round is what you can wear all year round. Um, and some of Iramu maybe, I, it's not about, the school zone is not about what primary school you go to, it's about where you live. So you need to, when you go to find my schools, you put in your address of where you live and that will tell you where you are zoned to. So it hasn't got anything to do with the primary school that you go to. Uh, students changing for each class, is that changing rooms because they change for some classes, other classes they will be in the same room all the time. So we have a year seven excursion at the start of the year to, um, to Adventure Park. There are some excursions that depending on what um, activities that you do or, um, or what subjects that you do, for example, you do geography, you may go out on field work for geography. So they're very much our excursions are curriculum based, except for the start of the year. Or actually, I can't answer the food in food tech. Yummy stuff is what you get to do and you get to eat it. So you get to make lots of things. Sport uniform is worn to school on your sports days. So you don't have to get changed when you come to school. So if you've got PE, on your PE day, then you have then you can wear your full sport uniform. Okay, so this the CELP um, students are the top twenty five students that will sit the edge test. So there isn't an eighty percent rule; it's the top students, top twenty five students that will go into that if they want to. Not all students want to. Um, how many sections or home groups have we got in year seven? Currently, we're up to 13, Chris, or 12? 12 at the moment. 12 at the moment. Um, that varies dependent on how many students enrol. And only students that are enrolled at our school can be in the CELP program. So, Scott, we don't do a school camp. And for the reasons of um, it has been done in the past, it has been said that there are new rules around camps as well. Um, and our school camps didn't get all of the students attending. So we got down to about 50 students out of a 250 attending the camp, which is setting up something that not all students um, and families want to participate in or can afford to, or for different reasons, um, aren't able to. So, whereas our day trips for our year sevens at the start of the year, 250 out of our 270 students attended. So it's far more inclusive for us to do day trips than it is to do a camp. Um, so no, our, our four languages are Chinese, Italian, Spanish, and Japanese. <clears throat> and no, I can't limit the number of students coming to the school. If you're in the zone, you can come to the school. 
and we have an average of 25 in a class. Um, students need to maintain um, an average that is, and to, to stay in self, we encourage kids, kids that are doing well, because sometimes the pressure can be a little bit too much. So it's a, um, each, each student is, is individual in whether they remain in self or not. And there is no requirement to study IB, it is a student choice. Okay. I think I whipped through those pretty quickly. So thank you to everybody that has been on tonight. And um, so is there a school bus? I'm not quite sure what that means, the wrestling. I think school it's Wesley Gardens. Oh, okay. I can't tell you where the school bus zones are because they change every year. The school has nothing to do with the CDC school buses. That is something that is set by demand with the um, with public transport Victoria. So I cannot, what is there now doesn't mean it's going to be in the same ones next year. So I cannot guarantee anything about a school bus. So thank you everybody for coming on tonight and thank you to my team for um, giving the information. Um, we look forward to seeing you um, and look forward to getting your applications should you live in the zone. So. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. No problem. Thank you. I have a question, what is IB? IB is International Baccalaureate, and you do that in year 11 and 12. It's a bit different to the VCE, and it's for students that are, um, are quite self-motivated because there's lots of research things that you have to do for yourself. And you have to do maths, you have to do a science, you have to do a humanities, you have to do art. So it's, um, it's not as much choice as VCE, um, what you will find and what you'll learn about is whether that you're the type of learner that would be good at VCE. So you've got to be really self-motivated to do IB and to be able to self-manage your time. Um, and it is quite different. But once you settle into year 7, 8, 9 and 10, you'll get all that information about what it is. Do you have to take a test for IB as well? No, you don't. Okay. Um, hi, this is Gaurav here. I had a quick question. Um, I actually uh, am still in the process of uh, building my house in Veribi. Uh, mm -hmm. so it, it's in the process. So uh, will I still be able to apply for the school? Because we are definitely moving there, you know. Yeah. You have uh, to be living there. So if it's just starting to be built, you have to have the, the address that you are living in. So if the house is not... house you are, you are living in. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's a it's, it's my like if it is not complete, but it's under the process. If I have signed the contract and everything, will mm -hmm. I still be able to apply for for the for the school? No, you have to be living there. It has to be finished and living there. Okay. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. What kind of subjects will come in the self exam? I don't know, darling. I don't do the self exam. It's an edge test. So. Um, it's, I would say it'd be numeracy and math stuff and English that you would be doing. Um, sorry, my son is currently doing, um, French in the primary school. So when I look at the languages in your school is quite different. You're still yes. offering French or not? No, really? we don't offer French. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. When will the primary school uh, give us the form to fill out? Oh, was that date on the very first one? They will come pretty soon, okay? So that's something that um, it will be happening, I think, in about March or April. 
I don't know the exact date that they, they will give it to you. They have a time that they have to do that. So what will it be like in term two? So it's a job that you can ask at your primary school teacher tomorrow, okay? All right. Um, Thank you, everybody. Yeah, Amanda, sorry, uh, if, if I could just, uh, I, I asked that question about the construction. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, uh, like it's because of the delay, things are getting delayed and we really didn't have any other, like we didn't plan for any other school. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was just wondering, is it still something that we, we you can consider at least? Uh, 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 that's that's the, because I, I actually uh, inquired about it last year uh, because mm -hmm. we're still getting pushed out because of the, you know, like the, the restrictions, COVID scenario and everything. Uh, there were delays going on and uh, I am about to sign the contract, I know. Usually it doesn't take that much. So hopefully by end of year it should be ready. But yeah, it's, that's why I was thinking that uh, if it is still something that you can consider. So uh, I can't consider that. You have to be living yeah. in the zone. So, um, and I'm sure you can appreciate there's lots of estates around that mm. people have purchased land and that type of thing, um, but it doesn't actually guarantee that you will end up living there. So, unless you live at the address, that is what you need to use. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Chris.